If I had a penny for every time somebody asked me what kind of e-bike motor this is, then I wouldn't be rich, but I could maybe buy a chocolate bar or something. No, this is not an e-bike. This is a pinion gearbox equipped carbon fiber enduro bike, the Zero Katipo. Is it good enough to convince me to ditch the derailleur forever? Stay tuned to find out. The biggest talking point on the Zero Katipo is undoubtedly that gearbox that uh, offers you your gearing range as opposed to a standard derailleur and cassette system. Zero offers the choice between a 9-speed or a 12-speed pinion system when you buy your bike, um, so you can tailor your preference of weight or a slightly increased gear range. I opted to go for the 12-speed model that you see beside me here, the pinion C1.12. This thing offers 12 gears with a 600% range, so the equivalent of a 10 to 6 60 tooth cassette, um, so certainly a nice and wide gearing range that uh, should let you not only get up some pretty nice and steep hills, but also uh, pedal super fast on the downs too, if that's your, uh, your kind of preference. Operation of the gearbox is slightly different to a standard derailleur system because the pinion system needs a uh, secondary gear cable to kind of provide a counter force for the mechanism inside. So what that means is, as standard, Pinions offers the uh, gearbox system here on the Zero with a grip shifter as opposed to a trigger shifter, which might not be to everyone's liking, but it does prevent, uh, provide some real benefits out on the trail, letting you get through a huge amount of gears with a kind of little twist of the, uh, the throttle, it feels like. And uh, certainly it's not being a deal breaker for me, um, but we'll talk about that a little bit more in the ride impressions later. On this Katipo that I've been testing, instead of using a standard chain to drive the uh, rear wheel from the pinion system, instead there is a Gates carbon drive belt drive system instead. Um, this does kind of uh, do the same job as a chain, just with a slightly different sort of uh, yeah uh, way of going about it. It means that you don't have to lubricate it at all. Um, and yeah, certainly it's potentially a little bit more damage resistant as well than a chain and it's been quite a pleasure to use. Um, then that is tensioned by the uh, Pinion BT1 belt drive tensioner, which sits around the bottom bracket, meaning there's nothing hanging down off of the rear wheel uh, in a kind of vulnerable spot where your derailleur would normally be that might snag on a rock or a root on the side of the trail. Um, this is then given a little bash guard as well to fend, on, fend off any damage to the gearbox or to the uh, front sprocket of the belt drive system. The Zero Katipo frame is constructed of primarily carbon fibre for the mainframe with an alloy rocker link in place to drive the shock. Zero lets you choose between the enduro or a trail rocker link uh, and with a different stroke shock you get either 140 or 160 mil travel. Um, so I've been on the enduro model here with the 160 mil travel, obviously giving you the most aggressive setup. But if you get down the line and decide you want to switch things up and go for a slightly shorter travel, or if you have the trail and you want to go to the enduro a longer travel uh, bike, then you can buy the replacement link for much cheaper than a whole new bike and uh, yeah, end up with a slightly different character, which is quite n nice and neat. Mechanics will be happy to see that the uh, brake routing for the rear brake is totally external, meaning you don't need to split the system and potentially have to re-bleed it uh, if you're changing your brake or fitting a new one. And uh, the uh, pinion kind of dual gear shifters are routed internally as well as the dropper post. So uh, yeah, I think that's a kind of smart balance of all the uh, mechanic friendly and clean looks that you get. Uh, because there is uh, the, the belt drive in place on this, it doesn't flap around quite so much as a chain, so you don't need quite so much frame protection to keep it quiet. So there's just some very thin kind of rubber uh, coverings on the chain stays to fend off any potential impacts. And then a little uh, guard in the down tube as well to uh, keep the most vulnerable damage prone areas safe. Regardless of the trail or the enduro configuration of the Katipo that you select, you get the same linkage driven single pivot suspension system to deliver either the 140 mil in the trail mode or 160 in the enduro mode. And because of the uh, 
gearbox system instead of a standard drivetrain. There's a number of benefits that uh, are provided to the suspension, namely uh, some uh, improved weight distribution. So the weight of your drivetrain is focused towards the, the center of the bike in a slightly lower down position, which gives you a kind of uh, more e-bike feeling in terms of how it descends uh, with all that weight concentrated between your feet and then the uh, front and the rear wheels seeming a little bit lighter and more reactive. Um, also, the kinematics don't change depending on the gear that you're in. So typically on a derailleur and cassette, you uh, have different levels of anti-squat depending on the gear that you're in. So uh, yeah, your pedaling performance differs throughout the gear range. Whereas on the zero, because it's a constant chain line, you're given the same characteristics when you pedal regardless of the gear that you're in. Zero currently offers the Katipo only in sizes large and extra large, as they believe that 29 inch wheels on both ends is only suitable for riders over a certain height. If you're in the market for a similar bike with the uh, pinion system, but you're a shorter rider, then they do still offer their Tanoa, which has 27 and a half inch or mullet setup wheels. Um, so that should be able to get you sorted. I opted to test the size large uh, with a 475 millimeter reach, as this is closer to my preferred kind of numbers than the 505 mil reach of the extra large um, certainly I could have gone up size I'm six foot two or 189 centimeters um, and the large size did expose a couple of geometry quirks we'll say or certainly things that I would like to change if it was uh, me specking my own bike and my own numbers um, but it proved to be pretty comfortable overall and uh, I think riders around about my height or certainly uh, slightly shorter would be happy on uh, either of the two sizes this large has a, uh, like I said, 475 millimeter reach. There's a 610 millimeter stack. The effective seat tube angle is 75 and a half degrees and the head tube angle is 64 degrees, uh, regardless of the size that you choose. The rear end is 435 millimeters long and the bottom bracket sits at 25 millimeters below the axle, again, regardless of the size that you choose. Um, so certainly there's a, a few numbers in there that uh, show that it was designed uh, or certainly released a few years ago but overall it's definitely a kind of purposeful handling package that uh, should provide a pretty good ride but we'll get onto that next. So then how does the Zero Katipo ride? Of course, the biggest talking point with this zeroed Katipo is that pinion gearbox system. Um, so we'll quickly touch on about how that performs before we talk about the remainder of the bike. Um, certainly, it's not my first time using a gearbox system, and I'm quite a fan of them. Um, you can, uh, you know, not having to worry about a rear derailleur is really nice, but also the performance benefits that they do provide in terms of the actual ride feel are very real. Um, your more central uh, kind of weight distribution, the lighter rear wheel, which does react a little bit quicker to the terrain, um, stiffer rear wheel or a stronger wheel, rear wheel for the same given uh, weight are all really nice things. And uh, the actual shift in itself that the pinion op offers you when you're on the trail is really nice too. The grip shifter won't be to absolutely everyone's liking, that's for sure. Uh, but once you get used to it, I didn't find it to be much of a problem at all. Certainly on some of the descents, I found it quite difficult to change gear when you're gripping on hard, because uh, obviously you need to translate your hand to make that shift. But um, once I got used to that and uh, picked my moments to shift into a harder gear, it didn't prove to be problematic whatsoever. Uh, the really nice thing is if you get to the uh, kind of bottom of a sudden steep pinch of climb, you can really rip through three, four, five gears if you want to get yourself from a descending gear straight into a climbing gear and uh, prevent yourself from interrupting your flow and having to worry about kind of getting your way like easily, uh, you know, easing off the power to get through a cassette. Instead, you do need to uh, yeah, ease off the power a little bit to shift through the pinion system. Um, but once you do that, you can yeah certainly rip through a bunch of gears at once. And then as soon as you stamp back on the pedals, you know that it's going to be in the gear. Um, at no point during the test was this thing vague or was I uncertain that it wasn't going to be in the right gear. Um, it just always does the shift perfectly. And then you can get back on the pedals and hammer it. We've got the grip shift here with a yeah, the, the kind of display that shows you the uh, the gear that you're in, which is really handy since you can't just look down at the cassette to check. And, uh, you know, I've been pedaling along a bit of flat, fairly fast, and uh, now it's pointing up the way. So the quick 
twist to the shift, I can get straight on. No gears to change. No gears to wait to snap in place before I put on the power. And that sort of stands when you're going up the hill too. If you want to go into the harder gear, you can uh, straight away, even while you're still pedaling, just flick it into a harder gear and uh, maintain your power the whole time as if you didn't change at all. It's when you uh, go to change into an easier gear that it becomes a bit different and you've got to kind of adjust to the pinion system a little bit because if I try and change while I'm pedaling right now, it will not physically let me. However, it does need you to uh, let off the power to change gear. So what you can do is uh, preload this grip shifter a little bit. You don't want to rip it, but uh, a little bit. And as soon as you let off the power, it flicks into place. Let's try it again. There we go. Into gear. Up nope, something nice and steep. The 600% gear range that the Pinion Gearbox offers is certainly impressive. Uh, obviously offering you a far wider gearing range than your uh, sort of Eagle style drivetrain or the, the modern 12 speed drivetrain. Um, but the way that Zero have chosen to uh, spec the gear ratio on this thing, the easiest gear is only roughly 10% easier than an Eagle setup. And I know there'll be people saying that you just, you know, why would you ever need an easier gear than Eagle to start with? But it turns out, I mean, maybe I'm alone. I'm not sure. I'm not going to tell you what you want. But uh, for me, I'd, with that 600% range being so wide, I'd rather have a like, you know, really, really rock crawler, like super, super easy gear on that pinion system to, uh, you know, either bail out your legs on a super steep bit when they're tired or just to let you get up something like hilariously steep. Um, and because instead pinion have chosen to spec it slightly harder, so you've only got a slightly easier gear than Eagle, it means that at the other end of the cassette, your hardest gear is hilariously hard. There was like, maybe once or twice that I found that I could actually pedal this thing in its hardest gear at all. Um, so yeah, certainly I'd look to uh, swap out one of the sprockets on that uh, belt drive system for something a little bit that gives you a little bit of an easier gear, whether it be a bigger one in the rear or a smaller one in the front, just to really maximize that big 600% range and uh, yeah, kind of take the fullest advantage of it. The easy end of that gear and range does quickly expose the uh, what I would say is the biggest geometry flaw on the Katipo, or certainly the thing that I would want to change the first, and that is the combination between the uh, slightly higher bottom bracket than we're starting to see these days, uh, kind of commonly, the slightly shorter rear end than many, uh, a 435 mil, and then the slightly slacker effective seat tube angle than most bikes have these days. When you combine the three of those, neither of those on their own are actually that kind of far out there um, and they're super close to being kind of yeah I guess modern numbers but when you combine the three of those together you end up with a slightly more rearward weighted position than you would uh, potentially want ideally to uh, make full advantage of those easy gears in the uh, pinion gearbox range and it means that you can't quite climb up the steepest stuff that you might want to with ease uh, instead you have to put a huge amount of your kind of body weight and your effort onto uh, keeping those bars down and uh, then you find the the balance between keeping grip on the rear wheel and keeping the front wheel weighted is quite difficult so it's not the best uh, climber when it gets super steep but when it comes down a, a little bit in gradient, it's certainly a very comfortable position. Um, the climbing platform as standard when the shock is unlocked is quite a comfortable climber. It's not a super stiff and racy feeling. It has got quite a lot of compliance, which is great for getting traction or uh, yeah, just keeping yourself a little bit more comfortable in the saddle on the long pedal through rough terrain. But it does mean that you need to use that lockout lever if you're really wanting to put down some uh, hard watts. Otherwise you do feel like you're losing a little bit of energy. I don't feel like the pinion gearbox has got a huge amount of drag. Certainly it feels like you can feel a slight mechanical rumble, uh, especially when you get to a high cadence and you're putting in quite a lot of power. Um, but I don't think it's necessarily like resistance or drag, just yeah, a slight rumble, but it can certainly kind of make you think, is this causing a lot of drag? 
But what it definitely does is by the end of a long ride, especially in really kind of sloppy terrain, um, when your drivetrain is completely covered in mud, especially with this uh, Gates carbon drive belt drive, there's absolutely like no perceivable change in the amount of drag in the system. So when your derailleur system would be sounding awful with the, the kind of sloppy mud and the grittiness uh, dragging in the easiest gears and definitely feeling like you're, uh, you're dragging a lot more than at the start of the ride, this thing remains consistent regardless of the conditions. And uh, yeah, certainly that and the lack of maintenance that it requires um, are two absolute standout features that make it an absolute pleasure to use, especially over the winter in somewhere like Scotland or the uh, Pacific Northwest. Now, it is an enduro bike, so let's talk about its performance on the descents, where it undoubtedly matters the most. Um, certainly, the pinion system, immediately when, you drop, when I dropped in for the first run, the absolute silence of the bike when you're descending was incredible. Um, you know, I, I didn't think, or I don't think, that many bikes these days are particularly loud. Certainly, some suffer from some uh, yeah, cable rattle or chain slap noise, um, but most are pretty dialed in these days. But this thing goes an another level and above um, to really giving you the sort of smooth notions that a quiet bike um, deliver. Whether that's also because the suspension works pretty well, um, I'm not 100% sure. But overall, the uh, yeah, there's definitely smooth, kind of controlled, really uh, dialed notions when you're descending, which make it an absolute pleasure to attack rough and rugged terrain. Um, the overall geometry, certainly I've mentioned already, the, the rear end and the bottom bracket height kind of giving you a slightly more rearward position, slightly less weight on that front wheel. And that does tr translate to the descents as well. So you do need to adopt a slightly further over the front uh, riding position just to make sure that you are given plenty of weight through that front wheel especially on the sort of flatter turns um, but it makes for a really nice uh, like surprisingly playful bike you can pop and play with it quite uh, quite happily and it disguises the overall weight quite well as well um, so even though it is a few pounds or a couple of pounds certainly heavier than uh, many bikes in the same category, you don't really feel that when you're just riding some slightly mellower terrain. Um, it also makes it an absolute pleasure in the steep terrain as well because you can easily or uh, more easily get the weight off of the front wheel and uh, make it light getting off of drops at slow speed or uh, yeah, that, that sort of terrain is really nice and uh, comfortable and confident and uh, it, yeah, overall, it's certainly a, a good bike when the speeds are lower or the terrain is either steeper or uh, slightly less gnarly. What it does start to suffer with is a little bit of instability when things get really fast and uh, flat out. It's not unmanageable by any means, uh, but just compared to some of the modern crop, which are super stable, pretty much downhill bikes, this thing does not quite live up to that same, uh, same level of confidence in that kind of terrain. That said, overall, the geometry is comfortable. It's just it's lost out a little bit in the last few years to uh, some of the more modern crop coming up. As I mentioned earlier, the South Industries uh, Enduro Carbon Rims are very stiff and uh, the one thing I should mention also is that the clearance for the rear tyre is not fantastic on this bike. So if you were to run a softer alloy rim, potentially when uh, yeah, you were really pushing it hard and causing that wheel to flex, you'd end up with a little bit of tyre rub if you're trying to run a 2.4 or 2.5 inch tyre. Of course, you can go for a slightly narrower tyre to, uh, to counteract that. But uh, you know, a, a lot of the time these days, people are running 2.4, 2.5 for the kind of increased stability and uh, comfort that they produce. So yeah, I, I'd certainly like to see a little bit more tire clearance added into that rear end. Um, and then you wouldn't have to run such a stiff rear rim to, uh, to offset that. Um, the rear rim though being stiff doesn't tend to be a huge problem um, and I don't think this frame is overly stiff either so I was actually quite happy like riding with that South Industries rim in the back but it definitely becomes more of a problem when you're trying to attack really uh, sort of off camber, slippery, rough terrain uh, on the front wheel because yeah, then your, your front wheel just has a bit more of a tendency to deflect off the impacts instead of conforming to them. And uh, you do get a little bit more fatigue through the hands as well. So I did end up swapping out the front wheel um, for something else that I had on test, uh, which had a little bit more compliance. And that turned out to be a much more comfortable front wheel for me at least. 
That said, stiff wheels feel amazing when the terrain's a little bit smoother and when you're trying to kind of really square off turns or just uh, through hard compressions in uh, areas like a bike park. So it will certainly be a, a rim that people enjoy for certain scenarios, but uh, maybe not for me in uh, such kind of raw and rugged terrain here in the Tweed Valley. There's a couple of issues that I faced along the way testing the Sea Road, nothing too major, but uh, certainly worth talking about anyway. Um, the first being uh, quite a strange one for me actually, the Magura MT7 brake levers. Uh, the front brake, or for many people, you guys included, the back brake I guess, uh, fouled on the pinion shifter if I ran it too close to the bar. Um, so to get the right bite point for me, I uh, yeah basically had it that when I was squeezing it really hard, the uh, front lever would you know bottom out on the pinion shifter before I got as much power as I wanted which is obviously not very uh, nice feeling or safe so uh, I think one of the other Magura lever shapes would solve this or a totally different brake set altogether but um, yeah certainly a strange one for a brake that came equipped as stock spec on the bike. Um, the next one is the uh, bottle clearance. You certainly do need to be careful. Uh, don't be kind of assuming that you can get a big one litre bottle or something in this thing. Um, certainly the uh, YT Thirstmaster bottle, I think is the best fit for this. Uh, so that uses a Fidlock system and I think you get around about 600 ml of water in there. Um, a, a tight squeeze, but uh, certainly one that works. Now the most concerning one for me, um, absolutely, was I did manage to break the seat stay on this bike. Uh, there was a singular slightly botched landing I had uh, whipping it out on a photo shoot, which I c can believe it was the only uh, potential time that it would have happened, but certainly I, I didn't look at the bike after I'd made that landing uh, because I didn't think it was uh, serious enough to have uh, potentially compromised the frame. So yeah, certainly a funny one. Potentially there was a manufacturing defect there. Potentially I'm just too much of a hack for this bike. I'm not too sure. Um, but Zero's response to this problem was fantastic. And uh, they are saying that they treated me as if I was a normal customer, which I do believe because they are only a small company and they had a replacement seat stay shipped out to me and uh, it arrived in just over a week, which is uh, pretty damn good going. Otherwise, all the spec performed pretty flawlessly. The Fox suspension, of course, is uh, super good these days. Um, the Magura brakes were uh, really nice and uh, kind of consistent and dependable once I got the front lever dialed into a position that was a, a safe compromise for me. Um, and the absolute talking point of this bike, the pinion system and the gates belt drive were flawless and uh, really kind of opened my eyes to what the world could, uh, could be like uh, for a mountain bike rider if, you, if we all kind of ditched our derailers and cassettes. It's been a true, true pleasure to uh, ride with this system and I really do hope that we see a little bit more of uh, yeah, uh, acceptance across the industry and use by some of the more major companies to uh, bring these more into the mainstream because they are super nice. I hope you guys have enjoyed checking out this video on the Zero Katipo. It's certainly a good bike and the pinion system offers some real benefits, um, but it might not be for everyone and it might not be the absolute fastest bike out there. If you have enjoyed this video, then do give us a like, leave us a comment, let us know your thoughts on the pinion drivetrain system and subscribe to the channel to see more awesome content on awesome bikes like the Zero Katipo. Thank you very much for tuning in guys. Catch you out on the trails.